Colorful dandelions cover fields across the country in spring. It's well known that these dandelions come in native and introduced varieties, typified by Toraxicum officinale, the common dandelion, introduced over a century ago. The common dandelion generally stands out due to its larger flower and longer stem. This prominent appearance has led to incorrect misconceptions about it dominating native varieties. The common dandelion is a high polyploid with seeds that are largely unpollinated clones. These seeds are capable of creating colonies of clone flowers, even in faraway regions devoid of fellow dandelions. This is the main reason the common dandelion has rapidly spread since its introduction. In contrast, some native varieties of dandelions are insect-pollinated diploids that can't seed without pollen from another flower. The seeds therefore can't create new flowers if they land somewhere without other dandelions. Another factor in their limited dispersion is a preference for slightly acidic soil. Native varieties weren't dominated by the common dandelion, but rather have a tendency to pick and choose where they establish their colonies. Some native dandelions are also high polyploids. One such example is the white-flowering Toraxicum albidum, which consists of tetraploids and pentaploids that produce clone seeds. Genetic analysis of one variety of Toraxicum albidum points to it being a clone of a dandelion found on the Korean peninsula, suggesting that dandelion fluff must have crossed the Tsushima Straits to reach Japan. It's true that dandelion fluff can travel great distances. The fluff is capable of extended periods of stable flight by passing excess force upwards through gaps in its structure to remain unaffected by strong ascending currents. Furthermore, the seeds of high polyploid varieties are only half the weight of diploids, so can naturally cover greater distances. Dandelions cleverly utilize this fluff mechanism to achieve the ideal dispersal for each variety. While dandelions have been extensively researched to date, many questions still remain. High polyploid varieties have a mix of buds, flowers, and fluff on the same stem. Diploids, on the other hand, open multiple flowers at once that simultaneously close and become fluff. Fascinating, if scientifically unconfirmed, accounts tell of dandelions suddenly changing to fluff after those standing nearby had been cut down. One is left to wonder how exactly they sense changes in the environment around them. Recent research has revealed that cross-fertilization of native varieties and the common dandelion has resulted in the spread of a hybrid triploid species. Will the rise of hybrid species have a detrimental effect on native varieties? 
Or will they manage to coexist through some mysterious implicit understanding? Dandelions remain an enigma shrouded in mystery. We have yet to fully understand the mechanism by which they adapt to the environment in order to pass their genes on to the next generation. Humans do not have such refined sensors with which to measure the natural world. However, humankind possesses the power of analysis, one that goes beyond our natural limitations. The protection of this diverse and beautiful Earth through the analysis of nature is a mission that has been entrusted to humankind. <laughs>